Welcome to Anatomy and Physiology at Vancouver Community College. My name is Maria Moreland, and I'm your teacher for this term. We'll be doing four lectures for this first chapter, and the first one is an introduction to anatomy and physiology. There are major themes in science, and in anatomy and physiology, um, they are form fits function is one theme. For example, the form of a wing fits the function of flying. The history of biomedical science we study because all of the work that we do today is built on the work of previous scientists. We'll look at the scientific method because we're distinguishing science from other perhaps supernatural kinds of treatments. We'll look at human origins and adaptations to know where it is that we came from that gives us a better understanding of our own bodies. We'll also look at human structure and function, homeostasis, the language of medicine, and imaging. Anatomy is the study of form. It's the study of structures. What are they made of? What kinds of tissue? Where are they located in the body? Which cavities? What are the associated structures? For example, the heart. Uh, what is the heart made of? Now go ahead and think of some types of tissue that the heart may be made of. For example, cardiac tissue and specifically cardiac muscle, nervous tissue. The heart is regulated by the nervous system. Blood. Where is the heart located? In which cavity? In the chest cavity, otherwise known as the thoracic cavity. Associated structures. What keeps blood from flowing back into the ventricles from the atria? Valves. Those valves are kept in place by tendons. The blood is transported to the body via veins and arteries. When we're looking at the structures of the body, we can compare those of people of different types of lifestyles. For example, an athlete uh, versus a non-athlete, or somebody who's a complete non-athlete couch potato, never does any exercise. What will their heart look like? Well, this is an example of two hearts. One is a very large, and one is a normal heart. The heart may be large for a couple of reasons. One is athletics. Say a person does cardio exercise every day and they're an extreme athlete. And you don't even have to be that much of an extreme athlete, but just exercising every day, doing a fair bit of cardio, maybe an hour, can lead to a, a larger heart. But that heart has the muscle required to pump blood to the body for the exercise that requires it. Well, it could also be a large heart. It could be a hypertensive heart, a heart that grows large due to high blood pressure, high blood pressure caused by very narrow vessels and the heart's trying very hard to pump blood to the body, so it grows in size and muscle. But there's one key difference between the hypertensive heart and the heart of an athlete. So if we look, for example, let's, let's try this. Let's do two hearts. Let's consider, they actually look like spectacles, but let's consider the outer tissue is cardiac muscle And the chamber inside is called a ventricle. 
that holds the blood. What happens with uh, a hypertensive heart is that the ventricle doesn't grow. It just stays the same size. But the heart of an athlete grows in muscle size and ventricle size. So the heart of an athlete has enough blood to pump to the body, whereas the heart, hypertensive heart has that large muscle that still pumps the same amount of blood to the body. We study anatomy by various methods. One is observation. You can observe different um, telling signs of people that may have some kind of disorder or some kind of disease. So for example, uh, we talked about this in the class the other day, uh, skin color. A person may be quite pale, more pale than they are normally. Uh, there are some other examples of uh, pupil size, temperature. If a person's face, for example, is very red. Another method is called palpation. That is when you um, press on tissue. So in the case of taking your heart rate, for example, which you might take at your carotid artery or your radial, radial artery. Uh, you might also be, um, let's have to move a little bit further away. Uh, you have quadrants of your stomach, your abdominal area that um, a medical practitioner might press on different parts to see which organ might be in trouble. Auscultation, so, so uh, an example, sorry, of heart rate is by palpation. Uh, auscultation is the use of a sphagnomometer or a stethoscope. So that's also taking heart rate, but taking it with a stethoscope. Percussion is tapping. Tapping, for example, to see whether or not there are, is liquid in the lungs. So that the back will be tapped and you can tell whether it's hollow or not hollow by the sound that it makes. We also use um, cadaver dissection, the cutting and separating of organs, for example. And another method is known as comparative anatomy. And that is where we study more than one species that are related to humans, however, to uh, analyze evolutionary trends. A more modern aspect of studying the human body is through a method, it's for observational purposes and for uh, descriptive purposes more than any kind of diagnostics. However, it's interesting that uh, this method has arisen called plastination. That is where, in this case, these are uh, blood vessels of the human body and they've been injected with a latex. And after that, the rest of the tissue was allowed to decompose through enzymes and bacteria. Thus leaving the blood vessels in a hardened state. So you can see how densely packed capillaries are, for example. Very, very small things like cells and tissue, for example, we observe with a microscope. That's microscopic anatomy. The study of cells is known as cytology and the study of tissue is known as histology. And we're looking at both of these in this course because for all of the body systems, the fundamental foundation is the study of the cells and the tissue because they are the operating part of the body. Uh, we might take some pictures when we, when we do the labs or I encourage you to do some drawings 
of your observations. Early anatomical drawings for this, this one example is by Leonardo da Vinci. It's called the Vitruvian Man. You might have seen it before. Leonardo da Vinci thought that the belly button was the exact center of the body, indeed the center of gravity of the body. And so if you had outstretched limbs, the sides, they would touch a circle. He also thought that the height of the body was equal to the distance between the hands outstretched. And it is indeed very close, but it's not exactly the same. But that caused him to draw a square around the body. The Truvian man. Leonardo da Vinci um, made his observation by watching dissections. Only at the time, you could only dissect criminals. And the dissections would be in big theaters without a lot of uh, preservation, like maybe alcohol, but still kind of smelly. Nevertheless, he persevered and he, he studied there and he studied in hospitals where you can see that emaciated people have uh, protruding muscles like the biceps, for example. And so he drew from that source and also skeletons. And he made some very good and very accurate drawings. And it's important when you're, when you're doing your labs, when you're looking through the microscope, or you're, you're drawing any anatomical feature, that it be accurate, as accurate as possible. Um, Leonardo da Vinci himself was kind of obsessed with proportions. So for example, he also thought, uh, well, and this is actually a pretty good measurement, that the distance from the hairline to the chin is one-tenth the uh, height of a human body. But nowadays, some people are terribly inaccurate with their drawings, <laughs> in particular um, cartoonists. So this has always really bugged me that cartoonists draw a female waists to be like seriously the size of a pencil, tiny little waists. Uh, any, I mean, I know it's just a cartoon, but any um, human with a waist that small could never digest anything, that no organs would fit into that waist, into that stomach, um, abdominal cavity, I should say. So uh, an artist drew the waistlines normally as they would be in a, in a properly proportioned individual, and I think they look just fine. But these kinds of depictions of the human body, and indeed depictions of uh, male and female, particularly female bodies as having very, very small waist and being very, very thin has an impact on society. Uh, one dramatic impact is on this individual who thought she should look like Barbie, the Barbie doll. So the proportions of the Barbie doll are such that um, she probably couldn't stand properly and she would be constantly having digestive problems. But this individual decided to form her body like Barbie by removing a rib. So she removed a rib from her body. And I'm not sure what other surgery she had, but um, she calls herself the human Barbie. She has some other fantastical ideas that dieting should be by breathing alone. So uh, a little bit mad, I think. But nevertheless, there. The depiction of uh, females inaccurate, inaccurately portrayed by using Photoshop, for example, makes people think they should look a certain way, whereas it's very unhealthy and leads to eating disorders. Physiology is the study of function. Uh, it describes the functions of the anatomical structures. So for example, um, we talked about the heart. How does the heart pump blood through blood vessels to the body. So we study things like blood pressure, cardiac volume. We might be interested in kidney function. Uh, the form of the kidney is fantastic for its function in that there are thousands of tubules that filter our blood every day. And in this course, we're looking at the workings of the nervous system. How does it communicate to the body in such a, an efficient fashion? We study by using methods of experimental science. It's a little bit different than just observing. Uh, often we, we do comparative physiology, so stud studying different species, 
one of the reasons is that we can't use um, humans to test drugs. And so that's why it takes a little bit of time for drugs to become available. And one case in point, of course, we're all waiting anxiously for a vaccine for the COVID virus at the moment. Um, but that takes a little while because these, um, these drugs need to be tested on animals first normally, and then human clinical trials take some time. So fields include in physiology, pathophysiology, which is the study of disease, and neurophysiology, which is the study of the nervous system. So I wanted to draw this first part of the lecture to an end here. Thank you for watching.